Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to return to the subject of good old locally attached storage or direct attached storage or basically bloody storage that's right there and today we want to talk about a product that's going to be launched very very soon from the guys at Terramask. Do you remember them from NAS? Well they actually have a decent number of direct attached storage solutions covering both USB and Thunderbolt and next week I believe on the 23rd or 24th of April we're going to be seeing them launching their first crowdfunding. That's right they are taking to kick starter seriously is everyone doing that at the moment man alive we'll come back to that later on but this is a new technically 8 bay storage solution utilizing the same chassis as this as the f4424 that we talked about here on the channel and this is going to be a four hard drive and four nvme daz system and frankly i haven't seen hardly anything like this for a very long time it's not perfect there's definitely compromises with that architecture that we're going to talk about later on but in this video, we want to talk about one, what it is, two, what it can do, three, what it can't do, and why are they going crowdfunding? So number one, what the hell is it? This is the Terramaster D8 Hybrid. Again, a four 3.5 inch SATA or SATA 2.5 inch SSD and four M2 NVMe system. They're rocking out the gate uh, with an RRP at $299, but with the crowdfunding, they are saying that when they go towards that, early backers are gonna get this system uh, at $199. So make of that price tag what you will. They've also got a deposit system running in place on their website. Again, how much you're going to need that, who's to say. They are going to launch it on crowdfunding, how many early access units, all that guff. But bottom line, there is a deposit if you want to secure the price. But personally, I just hold out for the crowdfunding starting personally. And now the four hard drive base support up to the very latest 24 TB drives. So that means things like the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro, which we got a review coming on that, maybe live already or in the next date or so. That means you can get up to 96 terabytes of storage in the main hard drive storage array there. And the four M2 NVMe, Bay supporting up to uh, Gen 3 times 4 drives, and they are 8TB M.2 2280 drives. Obviously, with this kind of architecture, you're going to see a huge downgrade there in terms of the lanes. More on that later on, but it means that you can have up to a potential combined 128 terabytes of storage, not factoring in RAID. Now, the system technically has RAID on board. It doesn't have RAID 5 on board, and I'll be straight with you, that really bummed me out. But I will say the fact that it arrives with the first two bays in the storage drive area, having a RAID 0 or 1, so traditional mirror or combined, and all the rest of the other bays providing single RAID store, uh, single non-RAID storage that can be managed by a storage controller on your local system, it's better than nothing. At least you've got it. I, you know, at 199 to 299, depending on how you get hold of this device. It's not terrible, but I won't say it's the best. I would have liked to have seen more uh, USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2 10 gig RAID systems. Unfortunately, there are barely any in the market. Getting RAID controllers to manage that alongside an internal SATA controller has always been difficult. If you don't believe me, open another tab there in Chrome if you want. Have a look. Try to find RAID 5 enabled USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, RAID 5 enabled storage systems with 4 or 5 base. Trust me, there's barely any in the world, and the ones that are there have got middling reviews so don't be surprised why you never find that anywhere but that tangent aside um as mentioned this is a usb 3.2 gen 2 system when it rocks out the gate it's going to be having that 10 gig usb connection on the rear and i already know alongside a lot of you i felt the same what a bottleneck you know when you've got four hard drives in there you can probably hit something like six to 750 megs uh, second you've got four m2 nvmes even if you throttled them all to gen 3 times one uh, via downgraded lanes which almost certainly is going to be the case here usb 3.2 gen 2 and a single connection there on the rear means you have got a potential maximum bandwidth of just one gigabyte per second there so again you're looking at 1024 megabytes per second total potential bandwidth there via the rear and i will say because of the way the storage arrangements inside in that single port and the lack of any RAID combined nature for the most part it means that you're not going to be seeing those high numbers now 
on their own pages prior to the crowdfunding going live they have stated that with a single ssd you can get read performance comfortably saturating that usb 3.2 gen 2 connection there 960 gigabytes per second of sustained performance there they they said uh, but when it comes to write performance ever so slight change there with a single drive going down to 520 to 550 megabytes per second performance but once you get more than one drive there rated together then you can fully saturate it in write performance ultimately you can definitely see that some rather efficient uh, SATA to uh, PCI uh, controllers are built inside this system that mean you know without the RAID performance externally you're not going to be hitting those massive numbers and you haven't got the external connection there is a reason this system is clearly going to be 199 out of the gate there I kind of wish it was Thunderbolt I think we could all agree what we'd like to see is a Thunderbolt version of this Thunderbolt 3 or 4 it doesn't matter even USB type 4 um, it would have been great to see because it would have opened up the door to a potential 40 gig per second bandwidth but again it's finding those multi-lane controllers that you're just not finding there in the market where this does have feature and functionality is when you're going to utilize it to expand your existing TerraMaster setup there if you've already got a TerraMaster now some of the newer generation that got USB 3.2 Gen 2 you'll be aware that but, you know, TerraMaster has expansion devices and this allows you to use it. So you're going to have a four hard drive, four NVMe, hot, cold data storage system that you can expand on your existing RAID, uh, your existing NAS system there, if you choose, using the TOS architecture in the NAS systems. Alternatively, this system does arrive with TerraMaster's PC backup so uh, software, T-Upper. Uh, there we go, or TPC. Uh, if you're a Mac user, you can use Apple Time Machine, but that does allow you to back up your whole Windows OS onto the system regularly and schedule those backups as well via that local backup. Again, fairly rudimentary stuff, but the fact that you've got that software included with it is a nice little bonus at 199, I will say. Furthermore, I will say the power consumption for a system that will have four hard drives and four NVMEs sitting there at the 38 to 40 watt power consumption when in active use, and that was tested with 24 TB dri uh, 22 TB drives by TerraMaster themselves, and that system also arriving with an external 72 watt PSU. It's not incredibly small, but it's also not that high either once you factor in the scale of the system of that 40 watt there. Now, let's go to the big question. Why crowdfunding? TerraMaster have been around now for quite a number of years, and although one could argue they're not exactly fully penetrated in the DAS market and direct attached storage general system market there and local access storage, it is arguable TerraMaster have got enough of a rep so they could rock out the gate with a system like this without going the crowdfunding route. Uh, on top of that, there is a smaller version of this, the D5, which is a two hard drive, three SSD version of this that is going directly to retail there, direct via tra traditional Amazon, the yeah, uh, B&H and more. Why is this system going towards crowdfunding? And again, I wondered it myself, so I immediately reached out to someone at TerraMaster and just flat out asked them, why on earth are you putting this into Kickstarter? Why aren't you just putting it traditional retail? And as you can see from the quote there on screen, again, you can read it, but to boil it down, much like a lot of brands we talked about recently that have started moving into crowdfunding and indeed Kickstarter to launch new products, they're clearly trying to take advantage of a lot of that trend analysis, trying to take advantage of a lot of, you know, the potential return on investment gains from understanding the audience a little bit more. And I get that, but still nonetheless, I think there is going to be people that are feeling a little bit ruffled that an established brand is taking to what was once considered an indie platform to promote products. Do I think this is a bad idea? No, I think it's probably a very good idea that TerraMaster launches a product like this on crowdfunding. It is incredibly niche. Me personally, I am not the intended user for this but I've definitely met users who would take advantage of a system like this in terms of not as worried about the general performance connected from A to B but what they want is sustained performance they want storage media inside that although you're not going to have the opportunity via the connected external cable to hit those maximum performance numbers you're going to be able to fully saturate for a sustained period for a very 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 long amount of time and in that world this is going to be desirable so I kind of get why TerraMaster have done this I just think it's a bit late in the day for them to be doing it, particularly when the two bay is going to be out there as well. But there you go. What do you guys think? Are you the sort of person that this product is aimed at? I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one because, frankly, I do talk about TerraMaster a lot on the channel and this product does intrigue me because it's unusual. I've not found a product like it and 
if it can be used to expand a NAS system, there is definitely a market for that for people that want to have a fast performing and fully saturated externally connected expansion device. And I think for me, that's where I see more versatility in this product, but maybe you are different. Let me know. I'll link in the description towards the Kickstarter pages and some of the official resources I could find on it. So you can go down there and find out more about it. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.